What's most important is what you think. So without any preaching from this film, let's examine the facts and only the facts. There are too many false impressions and prejudices to do it any other way. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Cannabis sativa, more commonly called marijuana, is the most widely abused illegal drug in the United States. It's been effectively criminalized since the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, and before that, individual states passed laws banning the plant. The Drug Enforcement Administration considers marijuana a Schedule I controlled substance, meaning that like heroin and ecstasy, it has a high potential for abuse, no currently accepted medical use, and a lack of accepted safety for use. Yet it occupies a unique niche in American culture. According to a 2011 Gallup poll, 50% of Americans believe marijuana should be legal, and a 2009 survey found that 16.7 million Americans used marijuana recently. Some state laws even conflict with federal laws on the subject. As the debate over marijuana policies continues, some advocates believe there's a more important question. How exactly did marijuana become illegal, and why? Here's where it gets crazy. There are several conspiracy theories about marijuana, but the most famous concerns newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst. Hearst owned lots of trees to supply paper, and his investment was threatened by hemp crops. Hemp plants could allegedly replace conventional paper and synthetic materials like nylon. According to the story, this last detail drew in the DuPont Empire. Once Hearst and DuPont partnered with Harry J. Anslinger, the commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, they worked to turn the public against marijuana. What's the evidence? Those who believe this theory often point to the overt racism of anti-marijuana crusaders. It's true that Anslinger tied marijuana to racist fears, calling it a devil weed from Mexico, implying that it made minorities violent and encouraged miscegenation. Hearst papers printed lurid stories of white youths who tried marijuana and ruined their lives. But this theory isn't perfect. First, the Hearst papers epitomized yellow journalism. Panic sells papers, and Hearst made millions exploiting the public's fears. Second, there just wasn't that much hemp growing in the U.S. at the time, only about two square miles under cultivation. Counting importation, annual U.S. consumption was only about 2,000 tons. It's true that a new hemp processing invention may have helped the industry grow before Anslinger's crusade, but no one knows for sure. As for the DuPont claim, nylon was originally used for women's stockings, which hemp would not have been used for. Anslinger's racism and fanaticism seem to be the deciding factor. What if marijuana criminalization was an attempt to exert more authority over minorities and immigrants? This isn't the only theory. Journalists like Gary Webb believe government agencies may keep drugs illegal for profit or foreign influence. Another, more esoteric theory argues that marijuana and other psychoactive substances can reveal a greater spiritual truth. In this theory, world governments don't want the common people to learn about this great reality, whatever it might be. Where does this leave us? Marijuana remains an illegal substance and the focus of an ongoing debate. There's no denying that Harry Anslinger considered marijuana a personal crusade, but moves to regulate this plant began as early as 1860. Opponents of legalization see arguments for hemp as thinly veiled attempts to legalize drug abuse. For advocates of medical marijuana or decriminalization, marijuana laws are just another kind of outdated prohibition. Today, the federal government believes that marijuana is harmful and must remain illegal as a matter of public safety. To many others, not just conspiracy theorists, there's a different explanation. That the government is hiding something they don't want you to know. Well now, you've heard from both sides of the question. What you do with your life is up to you. But in a few short years, this world will be your establishment, and you will be the establishment. And what you do or don't do about it will be your scene.